Welcome to this third part of um, putting your R model into production. Uh, in this third video, we're actually going to get into the weeds and start making that API with Plumber. Okay. Now that we can make a function, we can make an API. I want to start with the end game here. This is where we're going. This is all we need to create an API that can serve up model predictions. This is, this is it. And from here, we're gonna work backwards. All right, so now that you have this function, this prediction function, you're 90% of the way there. The, the last 10% is just so easy. But first, before we even do that, we're gonna kind of briefly, briefly go over the anatomy of a plumber API. Uh, plumber APIs use raw oxygen-like commenting, of uh, this pound followed by an asterisk for documentation. The special comment is followed by a series of tags and tags look like at tag name in camel case. And then endpoints are defined by the appropriate method tag and then followed immediately by the endpoint name. For example, get slash predict. This means we're gonna to create a endpoint called predict with the get method. And you're thinking, let's just make an API already. And okay, fine, I hear you. Let's just hop into our studio, get out of the slides. All right, so this is where we're at. Okay, so this is where we left off last time. We've read in our data set, we've created a linear regression model, we've created a function to um, create predictions, and then we took our model and saved it as an R object. So let's just kind of get into it. So we're gonna create a new script and we're gonna call it plumber.r. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna load the plumber package. And if you don't have it yet, you can type install.packages plumber, and that's gonna install the package for you. Okay, super, super cool. All right, now the first thing we wanna do is read in this housing model that we saved previously. So we're gonna call this housing model and we're gonna read it in using the read R package and the function read underscore read RDS housing model dot rds let's just check it out to see if it saved properly cool looks right 50 percent adjusted r squared we see our um, regression coefficients this is super super duper cool okay so how we're going to start is we're going to create our first plumber comment and we're gonna title this API I'm gonna call it um, uh, Boston that's a high school Boston Boston uh, median house hold income predictions and before we get into further document documenting this um, let's just create the endpoint since we're doing a very simple model, that's only gonna take two values um, that we're gonna provide for the batch and white variables, I'm gonna use a get method. And I'm gonna define this as um, uh, median income as the endpoint name. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go back to our previous script and copy this function and uh, oh, let's delete that comment and then get rid of the object assignment here because we're just going to use this um, regular undefined function to create our API endpoint. And now if we save this, we can run the API. Okay. Now this is what's called the swagger interface. This is a super common methodology for creating RESTful APIs. Um, when we use Plumber, we're gonna create a Swagger interface for interacting with it. We have the ability to try this out. Let's try it out. Let's try the proportion of white, 0.5, and then 0.5. Let's execute it. Okay, error variables batch and white were specified with different types from fit. The challenge here is that since we're providing um, our values through a URL, Plumber reads them in as character. So we need to take an extra step within our Plumber API to just ensure that our values that we're providing 
are actually um, usable by the model that we have here, the, the housing models. Um, and they need to be numeric variables as we used in creating the model. So now I'm gonna kind of stop um, working with this model and I'm gonna actually re-indent my function here because it's kind of bothering me. Uh, re-indent lines and there we go. Okay, so now what we can do is we're passing these in here uh, from the function arguments directly into this data frame. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna wrap these argument names into the function uh, as do not as dot numeric because what that's going to do is cast excuse me as numeric it's going to cast the, these arguments as um, doubles so if they weren't already which they're not when they're they're passed in by plumber it's going to coerce them or cast them into a numeric type because the, the regression model can't work with character type it needs to be numeric so as you saw when we spun up that swagger interface it was needed so now let's save our oopsies save our script run our api let's click here and then try it out 2.5 0 0.5 execute now we get one hundred twenty eight thousand dollars that is so, so cool. We've created an API and we're getting a JSON response body. Now what's even cooler about this is we can copy this URL and since it doesn't require any authentication or any other header, we can actually go straight into our browser, type it in and get that value. That's so awesome. This is the power of the RESTful API. Other systems can use it. And just to kind of show you one step further, I can copy this entire uh, curl C U R L request C U R L request or curl, it depends on who you are. Um, I can open up my terminal, paste that in there, run it, and get the same value. How dope is that? Super dope. So the next thing we need to do is actually document our API because if you'll see here, when we open it up. We, it's not very informative for us. Um, you know, like we, we could do better. It says API description. We need to give, give it something more to work with. Um, and to do that, we're going to create uh, another tag here, API description. This API serves up predictions of median household income for a... Uh, uh, based on the bachelor bachelor's attainment rate and the proportion of individuals who are who identify as white for a given census tract in Boston. So now if we save our plumber API, run it again. We can see that we actually have a description here. That's awesome. Now the next thing we need to do is define, or sorry, document our parameter names here. Uh, and the way to do that is we can say, we have to use our special comment again, at param for the param tag. If you've made any R packages before, it's gonna feel very familiar. So now we're gonna say the param or the function argument name, which is gonna turn into the API parameter name, prop white we can say um, the proportion of individuals in a census tract who identify as white must be between zero and one because it's a proportion we're not going to have less than zero and not going to have more than one because we can't have more than every person being white and i just love the new features in the R City IDE after 1.3. We got spell check. How cool is that? Okay, so now we can um, run this API and we see that we have documentation for here. Perfect. And then let's just do that for the other parameter, which is uh, at, oof, my finger's not working, at param attain edu rate the proportion of individuals in a census tract 
who have at least a bachelor's degree it must be between zero and one. Perfect. Now, if we run this API, it's well documented. How cool is this? Great. All right, in the next video, I'm gonna go over how to actually call the API that we've created from R. Because um, once you have an API, you don't want to um, go back to using the object. We want to actually utilize the API we've created. Um, and to do that, we're going to utilize the HTTR package. But I'll see you in the next video.